In this video, we are going to start taking a look at grading objects and specifically feature lines. Feature lines are the basis of all grading objects and you need to create feature lines before you can create your grading objects. Now, word of warning that the grading tools and feature lines in general are one of the most potentially unstable parts of Civil 3D and you can easily corrupt your entire drawing or the objects themselves if you do not follow proper drawing methodology here. I do have a previous video on the use of sites and I highly recommend that if you haven't watched that video, pause this one now and go watch the video on sites. There is a very specific order that things have to be done and we need to create, uh, create some what I call buckets to keep these grading objects separate. We do not want things with two different elevations overlapping with each other. If they're the same elevations and they're part of the same object, then all good. However, when we're building items like parking lots and ponds and detention ponds and storage areas and roads, we generally have items that overlap those. So if you're doing a pond, you'll have an inlet, you'll have an outlet, you'll have a sump, a forebay, and all those little bits and pieces will overlap with each other. And of course, they all have different elevations on them and they could end up causing monumental problems in your drawing. So keep things separate. Definitely go watch the video on sites. So to create a feature line, I can I use a simple polyline. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle here. Again, the PL command will work just fine, depending on the shape. It doesn't really matter what shape you have, but I'm just gonna use a simple rectangle. Under the grading or the grading dropdown, we can create feature lines from an alignment. So we could take our road alignment and turn that into a feature line. We can create feature lines from objects, which is what we're going to do. And if we select that, it tells us select your lines, arcs, polylines, or 3D polylines. So PL, line, arc, 3D PL, those, all those objects can be turned into a feature line. And lastly, there's the draw feature line, which is creating a feature line manually instead of with a polyline. Which one you use is entirely up to you. So I'm gonna create feature lines from objects. I'm going to select my rectangle here and hit enter. Up pops the create feature lines and the very first thing we see is about sites. Now these sites are those little buckets so I'm gonna make a new site and I'm just gonna grade a simple pad. We're gonna keep this nice and simple. And 3D geometry will We'll leave all that blank and we'll hit OK. I've got a number of styles in here and I'm just going to pick magenta. It doesn't really matter which one I pick. I like to build all my pieces with different colors and then combine them together at the end so I can keep a semblance of what's going on. It's going to create a layer for me. I'm going to erase existing entities so I want to get rid of this polyline behind. I want absolutely nothing in my drawing that can interfere with this feature line after I have it made. I'm going to assign elevations because I don't know off the top of my head what the elevation of the surface is in here. So I want to pull elevations off that surface. And then we have a command called weed points. Now there's only four points on this feature line, one in each of the corners. However, if you have a feature line that say pulled elevations off of triangles, you could have a few hundred points in your feature line and that's just going to slow your grading down. So take a look at the weed options if you, if you need to. So I'm gonna hit okay now. And up pops the assign elevations dialog box. I could pick, I can type in an elevation or I could pull it from a surface. I'm gonna pull it from my existing ground city of Calgary. This button here, insert intermediate grade breakpoints will every time this feature line crosses a triangle in the existing ground surface, it will put another point in your feature line. We don't want that to happen. In this case, I want a nice flat area. However, you might need to follow the surface and that's the command you can use to do it. We can also do a relative elevation to surface. So if I want to take the existing ground and maybe go one meter higher than that, I could, I could relative it to the surface by one meter. And if that surface changes, then my feature line will adjust itself. This is really great for when you're doing lock grading and building a corridor. We attach the feature lines to the edge of the road and if that road updates up or down, 
it will grab this feature line at the road and raise it up or down the amount that you specify. So I'm just gonna turn it off. I don't want it relative to the surface. For what we're doing, we don't really need to. I'm gonna hit okay. So we have a feature line added to the site pad. Now if I expand sites, site one has nothing in it. My pad, however, has a feature line in it. It is 713 meters long. It has an area of 31,000 square meters and then has minimum and maximum elevations. Now, if we select the feature line, we have a bunch of options up in our ribbon. However, I like to right click and go elevation editor. This is how we can view elevations of all four corners. Or if we had additional points, we could see all those points in this window. Now we have four green triangles on the screen and this is just in relation to these pieces. So if I select all four or all five here, we get all, all the ones highlighted. If I select one, we get one grip highlighted. Select the next, third, fourth, and then back to the fifth. So one, two, three, four, back to fifth. So it all ties together. It's a closed polyline. Now we can specify grade on this. So when we're grading a parking lot, we obviously want water to drain away to a, say a detention area or a catch basin. And we need to specify positive drainage on that parking lot. This is where you would start doing that. Now these elevations are picked up from this surface in all four of these corners. I don't wanna hold all these elevations. I'm going to hold these two, this one and this one actually, or I'm gonna hold just one of them and I'm gonna grade it so the entire surface slopes this way. Now we have to pay attention when we're doing this. There is a grade ahead and a grade back column. When we're talking about grading, if I look at this feature line and I wanna grade ahead, it's going to adjust the elevation of this point here because I am grading ahead. If I grade back, it's going to adjust the elevation of this point because I'm grading backwards. So as a general rule of thumb, if you want to hide the grade back column and always grade ahead as long as you know which direction you're going in. So if I wanna grade ahead, I'm gonna grade down at minus 5%, not minus 5%, minus 0.5. So from here to here is minus 0.5%. I'm going to add a PI point in the middle just to create an additional, just to say a low point. I'm gonna insert a PVI, hit okay. I'm gonna select another minus 0.5% because I'm now grading from here to here. From this one, I'm gonna grade ahead at 0.5%. From here to here, I'm gonna grade ahead at another 0.5%, which will make this back one zero. So I now have a graded feature line that's all at half a percent. However, we cannot visually see anything created yet because we don't have a surface made. In, there's two ways of making surfaces. We'll just make a quick one right now so we can see what has happened, but I will end up deleting this for one of the future videos. So I'm gonna create a quick surface. I'm gonna add, uh, add, add the feature line to the surface as a break line. I'm gonna select my pad, hit okay. Up comes the add break lines window. I'm gonna hit okay. And we can see that our surface is graded all towards this low point. If I take a quick object viewer, we can't really see because I'm not exaggerated. So I'll quickly exaggerate this and view it again. 3D geometry exaggerate will go by 20. Triangles as well, I'll exaggerate by 20. Now if I object viewer it, we can see a little bit more definition. So if I look at the front, it all grades down towards this low point. So that was how to make a quick feature line. If you click on the feature line, there's tools to edit it. We can add uh, vertices, we can subtract vertices and make this as detailed as we need to.